Hey everyone, it's Data Viz Bob here. Um, today we're going to have a quick and convenient review of run length encoding in the context of the shear warp factorization algorithm. Today I am in the University of Houston library. Uh, they were very kind to let me in and use this whiteboard, this beautiful whiteboard. I, th I thank the University of Houston Library and I've been working hard on my drawing today. This is I think the fanciest uh, drawing I've made so far. You can see why I didn't study art. Um, and this video is dedicated to Sammy Majub again. He would like to see a review of the run length encoding in the context of the shear warp factorization algorithm. So we're going to jump around here, all around here, right now. So I hope you can follow this. <clears throat> Let's just quickly summarize run length encoding. Run length encoding is used a lot, so it's a, it's a simple compression technique. It's very often used in image processing, right, to compress your photographic images. And I learned it in the context of networking for transmitting uh, data over a network with, say, low bandwidth, for example, or high bandwidth, it doesn't matter, to accelerate the process. Just a trivial example is here. Imagine we have a string of numbers that we want to transmit or, or compress, um, we can transmit the, the number 0 eight times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 times rather, or we can just transmit the number 12 times zero. So instead of transmitting 12 numbers, we, can, we transmit three numbers, one, two, and, th and zero. So that's three numbers to transmit or to summarize the data instead of 12. And this is a called a run of zeros. And the run has length 12 in this case. So it's a very simple example, but this is a very simple data compression technique and it can be used in the context of the shear warp factorization algorithm. So the shear warp factorization algorithm, this is the pseudocode. So start, select the data set that corresponds to uh, transforming the viewpoint to be orthogonal to the data set apply a shear, that's this step of shearing the data set in three-dimensional space, and then there are two for loops. For each row or scan line, do something. So this is a row or a scan line. For each slice from front to back, do something, right? So this is a slice from the front and then to the back in this direction. Then we skip transparent voxels, that's a run, and skip opaque pixels, that's also a run. So that's the run length encoding, those are the run length encoding steps. One happens in object space, this is object space, And one of them happens in image space. Skip opaque pixels. So, and then there's the last step, do, comp do compositing. So after we've done our skipping or compression steps, we have the compositing phase and then a warp intermediate image to screen. So I summarized those steps 
in a previous video, which was the summary of the shear wall factorization algorithm. I recommend watching that video before this one. This one goes into the detail about the compression and acceleration. Now, I'm going to focus on these two steps. So for the steps one, two, and four, look at the previous video. Now I have two drawings. I'm, sk I'm skipping all around today. <clears throat> I have these two drawings. Now, why do I have two of them? This is, this is the actual case scenario where, we, where we're doing ray casting into a sheared object space, right? However, for the purposes of this, of explaining the, 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 the compression and the acceleration, I think it's easier to use an unsheared example. So I'm just going to use this unsheared data set example to explain this, even though you all know the data set is sheared in the actual algorithm. So today I was very creative and I drew a foot instead of a head just to mix things up a little bit. Now the skip transparent voxels part, how can that happen? How does that work? So imagine we start in the top corner of the image space and we cast a ray into the volume, right? Now what I tried to draw was one row of transparent voxels. And that's this top row here. Row of empty voxels, right? So if this, if this row is transparent, and under, if we didn't use any acceleration, we would cast a ray from back to front and try to, to sample all of the cells, all of the voxels. But it's, it's a waste of computation time. In this data set of the foot, there's a lot of empty space. Right? So we can compress that row of empty voxels and just say, instead of here, there are n empty voxels, right? <clears throat> so that means we can skip that row of voxels. So in fact, we're going to just skip the transparent voxels. So skip them. Don't even cast a ray in there. And then for, if we skip the transparent voxels, we can skip the compositing phase of the ray casting. And that, can, that happens a lot for these typical medical data sets. There's a lot of empty space, right? That could happen for a whole row of voxels, right? We could skip a whole row and we could, we could keep going, right? We don't know exactly, you know, the details about how many we can skip but we can skip a significant percentage. The other acceleration technique, that is, I would call this an object space based run length encoding or acceleration. The other acceleration technique happens in image space, well, a combination of object and image space, but let's say it's image space based and that's this skip opaque pixels part. So <clears throat> imagine we get down to the exciting area of the data set, right? We're casting rays for each pixel and we get to the exciting phase where we hit the foot, right? So our ray enters the, date, the volume and we, we start sampling the foot, the data in the foot. And we're doing our compositing. Now remember, compositing is simply adding up the red, green, blue, and alpha values that we, that we accumulate along the ray. So the data 
is mapped to red, green, blue, and alpha values, the opacity. Now the opacity value has a maximum value of one. So if we are traversing the data and we accumulate uh, an opacity that reaches one or the maximum value, for example, right in the middle of the foot, Alpha is a very common Greek letter for the opacity. We can stop the ray. We don't need to process anything behind that value because as soon as the opacity is one, it's hit its maximum value. We can't go above that. So the RGB alpha values of the pixel here won't change after that, right? And that's an acceleration technique called early ray termination. Now that can create rows of opaque pixels. So we could have a row of opaque pixels. And then if, if this pixel is opaque, we can skip it or we can stop the, the ray terminate, we can stop the, the ray casting early before it reaches the, the end of the volume. And that's what the skip opaque pixels run does. Now in this simple example, it's very exciting. There's this, this is a run length of four. So we skipped, say, four transparent voxels. And in this exciting example, we could skip, say, three opaque pixels along that row. Yeah, and one final thing I don't want to forget is this only works if we have the one-to-one -one correspondence between image space and object space. Remember in the previous video, there's a one-to-one a -one correspondence between pixels in image space and voxels in object space. And without this one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, this acceleration technique is going to be very difficult. It's going to be very complicated. So that those two acceleration techniques rely on that one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay, I think that is the essential details. So that's the run length encoding aspect and acceleration technique in the context of the shear warp factorization algorithm. Thank you, Sammy, for asking the, the question. You're not the only student that asked this question. I just wasn't sure if I was going to manage to answer it in time before the exam. And thank you to the University of Houston, uh, the library, for letting me use this beautiful facility. It is a very beautiful campus here. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's lovely to walk around. And the fitness center is really great here. <laughs> um, thanks for watching.